Hey guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be doing a 7500 mile update on my 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn. And for those of you guys who don't know, I've had this 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn since last August, so we're coming up on 7 months now, racking up 7500 miles up until this point. I know a lot of you guys have been following this channel for my previous vehicle, which was a 2021 Camaro LT1, which I loved but eventually I became noticing some issues that could become really costly in the long term and I decided to trade it in for this 2023 Ram Bighorn Level 2 Night Edition while I still had some positive equity in the Camaro. So for the last six months of ownership, this truck has both been a joy and quite the surprise, which we'll go into towards the middle of this video. Anyway, as far as the front end styling, we've gone over all the upgrades and some of the modifications I've done to this Ram to this point. Starting with the stickers, I've gotten a lot of comments for this vehicle and where exactly I've gotten the stickers, where I got the side steps, cover, and the muffler. So I'll go over all of that again in this video. But up front, when you get the night edition for the Rams, it just gets the all black grill, which looks really cool, but you don't really see the Ram lettering. So I decided to get these stickers with a white outline. And in my opinion, it really transforms the look of this grill. The next front end modification I plan on doing is probably just an LED bulb upgrade. I know a lot of you guys were saying to upgrade to like a Laramie style light, maybe a limited style light. But in my opinion, I really like the black headlight housing we get here for the night edition. So with some LEDs for the actual bulb, I think it would look really good at night. Of course, a $1,500 to $2,000 actual light upgrade would look better. But for about 80 to 120 bucks, you can get an LED light upgrade while keeping the actual housing for the light. Same thing for the fog light. Of course, you guys see the front parking sensing. It's a nice feature for the big horn trim while being relatively towards the economy for the Ram. The silver metallic paint color is also beautiful. I ran it through a wash. I haven't waxed this truck in months and the tire shine as you see is wearing off, but it still looks absolutely beautiful. I also got stickers for the hood area. When you get this vehicle from the factory, the Hemi and the Torque or E-Torque are all blue. And in my opinion, the red contrast for the Hemi and the Torque looks a lot, a lot cleaner. So for the stickers for the front end Ram and for the hood for the Hemi E-Torque, I got these stickers from reflectiveconcepts.com. It's a Mopar genuine product, so if you have any issues with it, you can return it and it's all covered under warranty if you put a sticker somewhere that ends up breaking. Anyway, Reflective Concepts will leave a link right over here so you guys can buy it for your truck. Of course, the E also came with a red lettering, but in my opinion, I thought it looked a little bit tacky, so I left the E as blue. And we also got white lettering for the 1500, which I also looked a little bit tacky. I got it for like a red, white, and blue theme, but once I actually put it on the truck, I ended up taking the white lettering off of the 1500. The mirror caps are black accented. We get LED turn signals in these mirror caps. It says Ram inside. Hopefully I can center this camera so you guys can pick it up. There you go. Hopefully you pick it up on camera. I'll take a step back. Hopefully you guys can pick up the side profile on this truck. The next modification I did, of course, were the side steps, running boards, whatever you like to call them. I got these from Amazon. I've gotten a lot of stuff from Amazon for this truck. Well, not necessarily a lot. I got the steps and the tunnel cover, which we'll go over in one second. The steps were about 225 bucks. I'll leave a link right here for them. They say Smano W3, which kind of looks like Will in the corner, almost looks like a custom setup. They're forged steel design with a powder coat finish, kind of looks like a bed liner material. They're very durable. I've had them for about five or six months, no hints of rust. There is a subtle dent that I noticed right over here. Either I did it or it was like that when I bought it, but either way, it took me several months to notice. I'm not sure what the problem is with these birds. They're always screaming right here in this spot. Out rear, I mentioned the cover. It is a Synetic USA retractable tunnel cover. I got off Amazon.com too. My dad, if you guys have seen the video for his Ram Limited Longhorn on this channel, he also has a retractable cover from Gator Tracks. And honestly, that cover is a worse quality, at least while new, compared to the Synetic USA, and it costs about two or three hundred dollars more. It has two separate locks on it. They're currently not locked. I personally consider it kind of an inconvenience when they're both locked, so I personally only lock one. But to open it up, there's two ways. You can open it up with these latches. There's also a rope to open it and close it. My bed area is an absolute mess right now, but with this retractable tunnel cover, it makes hiding things and accessing things significantly easier. And also you can retract it all the way towards the rear windshield and have almost full access of your bed again. Anyway, we can drop this tailgate right down. 
I also installed those, these LED lights. You can't really tell just how bright they are, but they are incredibly bright at night. They're a sticky setup, but they've been on here for like three or four months and haven't gone anywhere. The factory housing would be right in here, but I'm not an electrician. I personally hate doing anything remotely close to electric work on anything, not just vehicles. So I personally just took the sticky LEDs. They're about eight bucks and they definitely do the job. The cover is also just about perfectly waterproof. I said I ran this thing through a car wash. Do you see any water in this bed? I don't see. I just see a bunch of crap from the firewood that I hauled home a few months back and yet to use my blower to get rid of it and all my baseball equipment. Too. Another thing I'm not particularly a huge fan of with this truck is this tailgate. It takes a lot of effort to close. I may address this in the warranty department at some point. This latch, if you don't slam it, it does not latch. I'm not sure if you can call this a modification, but for Christmas this year, my girlfriend's brother got me this pretty cool trailer hitch cover. I had a trailer hitch cover before, but it was plastic. This one is solid steel and it looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. Finally, the last modification, at least for the exterior, is my muffler upgrade. It was the first modification I made as soon as I got this truck. I made an appointment to get a Flowmaster Super 10 to replace the factory muffler, and it sounds really good, especially with these black tips. I went to Outlet Brakes and Muffler in Newport Ritchie, Florida. I'll leave a link right here to their website as well. So as far as where I got all my products from, the muffler is from Outlet Brakes and Muffler. The tunnel cover is from Amazon. It's a Synetic USA retractable. It's the standard retractable, not the motorized retractable. The motorized retractable is an additional two or three hundred bucks and you can open and close it with a click of a button. But I didn't really need that. I didn't want to pay the extra money and I didn't want it to break in the long term. The steps are also from Amazon. They're Sman Ow, Sman Wow, however you want to pronounce them. There are three piece step, the two side steps plus the middle step. The stickers are from Reflective Concepts and that's about it for the exterior. The interior also has some new modifications that you guys have not seen yet. But before we check out the interior, let's fire up this 5.7 liter Hemi with the Flowmaster Super 10 if you guys haven't heard it and here she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 sold by Ram for the 2024 Ram Bighorn with the Flowmaster Super 10 muffler. I'll try to show you guys the muffler real quick before we hop out back right there. There we go. Doesn't look like it's keeping up very well. It may have to be replaced in the next 20 to 30,000 miles if it continues to corrode like that, but it still sounds absolutely fantastic in the meantime. I paid 350 bucks at Outlet Brakes and Muffler for the muffler plus installation, and I was able to still keep the existing muffler, so if I ever want to go and put the stock one back on, I can. Taking a step inside, let's check out the final two modifications done on this truck, starting with the seat covers. As you guys know, I have been doing a couple videos with Truck Ipa and Coverado for their seat cover company, and as you see, they make some of the best looking custom seat covers in the business. The attention to detail for the stitching is top notch. These are genuine leather seat covers. My girlfriend Santa Cruz, her 2023 Santa Cruz, they also gave her a set of pretty sweet seat covers. They're a Napa leather, even better quality than what we have here, but mine came with back seat covers, which is pretty nice for our dog, but the back seat covers aren't anywhere close the same quality as the front seat covers. The fit and finish up front is perfect and you still keep full adjustability of the seats with leather headrests to go along with it. These are really, really comfortable seat covers. Comparing them to my dad's Longhorn Limited Edition with the standard leather seats, these in my opinion are softer and you keep the bolsters too so they're just as supportive. Huge thumbs up to Truck Keepa and Coverado and a huge thanks to them for hooking me up with some sweet sweet luxury seat covers which are affordable for the front and back here it was about 200 bucks for my girlfriend front seats they're about 130 bucks and again huge thanks to truck Ipa and coverado for hooking it up again this is a really good way to both make your vehicle more comfortable look a lot more premium and if you have cloth seats and you want them to last a little bit longer same with leather seats you just want to have a little bit less wear when you get rid of the vehicle these seat covers are a great way to cover up your standard factory seats while still making your interior look extremely premium 
comfortable and luxurious. Taking a step inside, the final upgrade, I guess if you can call it an upgrade that we've done here so far for the Ram, is the center console cover. My girlfriend just got it for me recently. It's got these two cup holders, so you can slide your phone into it. I'll leave a link right here. I'll ask her exactly where she got it from. For the most part, these seats like are absolutely beautiful. I'd 100% recommend anybody with a Ram to go on Truckeepa's website and Amazon.com and check these out. But other than that, this interior is pretty dirty. I apologize for you guys. I should have wiped it down before making this video, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time in here, so not a big deal. Another thing I added to this truck on top of the radar detector, which is a Uniden. I'm not quite sure exactly what model it is. It's a little bit dated. It's about seven or eight years old. But I also added a front and rear dash cam, which in my opinion is just about useless because I only have one 12 volt and 99.9% .9 of the time I prioritize the radar detector over the dash cam. Maybe I'm an idiot for that, but that's so far what I've been doing. I'll probably be doing that until it screws me over. The black trim, the wood finish, the massive 12 inch touchscreen Alpine sound system, which that's one thing I'm gonna complain about. At some point, I need to go do a warranty claim and get these speakers replaced because the front door speakers have an absolutely ridiculous rattle. Even with the bass turned all the way down, you have a song that has even remote amount of bass and these door panels or the speakers are rattling. The biggest surprise on this truck with this massive 5.7 V8, I've been averaging, check this out, 18.1 mpgs it was at 18.5 before i parked in this parking lot for the last 30 40 minutes but it was at 18.5 18.1 regardless it is amazing and considering that i disabled the cylinder deactivation on this truck every single time i drive it i'd recommend everybody with the ram bighorn or ram anything to disable the cylinder deactivation this is what you do to do that so you go into drive press this gear limit minus button and it shows you ers mode engaged hold plus to exit, but we're not gonna hold plus. We're gonna go up to the eighth gear so it doesn't limit us in our gears at all. And when you do this, it basically functions exactly how it would if you didn't do it. The only difference is you're not gonna get any cylinder deactivation and it's gonna basically disable your regenerative braking. So if you like your e-torque system and like to have the auto start stop and all that, don't do this, but if you hate auto start stop and you hate the cylinder deactivation, you have this theory that if you disable the cylinder deactivation, the hemi lifter failure may not be so apparent, I would definitely 100% recommend doing this to disable your cylinder deactivation. That's about it though, guys, for the front seat. Let's hop out towards the back seat. Maybe I should put it in park before I do that. Also, when you disable the cylinder deactivation, it also automatically disables your auto engine start stop. But when you go into reverse and back into drive, it resets and you have to redo the disabling of the cylinder deactivation. Out back, let's just check it out real quick. I'll mention that it's an absolute mess back here. I apologize. But you guys can check out the rear seat covers as you see fit and finish is nowhere even close to as good as up front even the middle of it doesn't really attach super perfectly but for the dog that's the only person or thing that's ever back here maybe my friends once in a while but they don't complain they actually think these seat covers are reasonably comfortable nowhere near as comfortable as up front the front ones do include map pockets but overall the back seat covers they look good from the distance like right here they look perfectly fine but as you start getting closer you definitely see that they are nowhere near as good as the fronts so if you just want to do fronts with truck keeper you can and then for the backs you can go with a different company maybe a basket if you have a pet that's what we have my girlfriend's truck or Santa Cruz whatever you like to call it hopefully she doesn't hear me say that anyway that's about it for the inside and outside of my 2024 Ram 1500 Bighorn level 2 night edition again if you want me to reiterate all the modifications and upgrades I've done for this truck so far the stickers for the Ram badge and for the Hemi e-torque from reflectiveconcepts.com genuine Mopar product I will be considering doing an LED light upgrade and a cold air intake because for the LED light upgrade, you got to get underneath all that plastic stuff. And maybe we'll do a video of the installation process. I personally hate doing electrical, so don't expect a video on that. But if I do a video on the lights, I will also be doing a video on the cold air intake for this truck. The side steps, running boards, whatever you like to call them, they're Manwow Level 3, I believe. And they're on Amazon.com at 220 bucks. They look great and they work excellently too i definitely recommend checking those out the cover without question the best retractable tunnel cover under a thousand bucks would 1000 percent recommend checking this one out it is synetic usa it's made in china but it does say synetic 
USA on it, so you can, I guess, claim that it's an American-made cover. The Gator Trax cover that my dad has is also made in China for reference. The muffler, Outlet Brakes and Muffler, or Outlet Brakes and Tires and Muffler Shop, whatever. I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly the name of their shop and their phone number. The muffler sounds fantastic. We'll see how it holds up for the years to come. So far, so good. But other than that, let's take this 2024 Ram 1500 Bighorn out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, so that was the 7,500 mile update of my 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Level 2 Night Edition. And as I mentioned, I always turn off the cylinder deactivation. This is how it's done. You press the minus, you up click the plus until you reach eight. And now cylinder deactivation is off. The engine start stop is also off and the regenerative braking is also off. I wouldn't mind it if the regenerative braking was kept with the cylinder activation off, but I also don't mind that it's turned off because it gives you a more consistent feeling through the brake pedal. Ride quality over the speed bumps, boom. You definitely feel the bumps more than you would feel them in my dad's 2021 Ram Longhorn Limited Edition. He's got beefier all-terrain tires which take about five or six PSI less of air which allows you to just get softer feeling through the bumps. And he also has the heavier duty off-road package suspension, which definitely helps as well. Looks like there's a school bus in that direction. So let's start off going this way and the school bus is coming this way as well. But anyway, hopefully you can hear the grunt out of that 5.7. Whoo! With the Flowmaster Super 10 muffler. This is just light throttle, of course and you get up and go really quickly. It's a school zone and there are several crossing guards and officers, so don't need to go too crazy. We can try out a real world turning radius, see what this 2024 Ram Bighorn's got. It's a really sharp turning radius for a pickup. The throttle is nice and sensitive. Once I get the cold air intake installed, it'll be interesting to see what changes up, but it feels really good even without the cold air intake. And it sounds really good too. A lot of you guys have been asking about drone with this Flowmaster Super 10 series muffler. There really isn't any drone at all outside of between 65 to 71 to 72 miles per hour. You don't hear any drone when you're cruising below 65 and you don't hear any drone when you're cruising above 72. I'm not sure why it drones in between those seven miles per hour, but it does. So keep that in mind if you absolutely can't stand drone, but want a beefier sound through your 5.7 liter Hemi. Although the ride quality here is a little bit stiffer compared to my dad's Longhorn Limited Edition, the steering feels better and the body roll also feels more limited compared to his truck. So there are compromises. If you want the better ride quality, you're going to lose the better handling and you're going to lose the better response. My dad's limited edition, I'm sure has something to do with his heavy foot, but his Longhorn limited edition also averages about 13 and a half to 14 and a half miles per gallon. While I'm averaging 18 and a half, well, it says 17.9 right now, but that is almost exclusively because of me idling for the last hour. We'll take a step out here. We'll try out an acceleration off the line give these guys a little bit of space off the line. We're going to do about half throttle. Woo. Wow. Yeah, guys, this thing picks up speed really well and sitting up high off the ground, you get a really commanding view of the road. Bumps, ride quality is good. Brakes feel really good. Throwing it in a little bit quicker than we should. Body rolls limited and coming out about a quarter throttle, nice beefy amount of torque with a nice engine note with this Hemi. That's why you go with the Hemi over some of the competition with say turbocharged six cylinders, which may make more power than this Hemi. For example, the Ford EcoBoost makes more power than this Hemi and it'll do zero to 60 in a, almost a full second quicker than this Hemi, like five and a half seconds, zero to 60. This Hemi is about six to 6.2 for the zero to 60. So the Ford EcoBoost is definitely quicker the Toyota Tundra with their 3.4 twin turbo. It's not quite as quick as the EcoBoost, but it's still a little bit quicker than this Ram. But you go with the V8 here with this Ram because you want that V8 muscle sound. You're not satisfied with that grunt or that fake grunt you get with the EcoBoost or the 3.4 iForce Max. You want the V8, but when comparing to the underpowered 5.3 that you get from Chevrolet, you want a little bit more beef. And when compared to the 
guzzling 6.2 from Chevy, you would like to get more than 11 MPGs in your full-size truck. Like, look, 17.8, and we're beating the crap out of it, idling for super long. The ride here is fantastic, way better ride than a Chevy truck, and a way nicer interior compared to a Chevy truck, too. Chevy's done a really good job with updating their interiors post-2022, same thing with GMC, but still, I still think I prefer the layout that we would get here. And compared to the Ford 5.0, I love the Ford 5.0. I just don't particularly love their interiors compared to the Ram either, or the way they drive. Ford trucks, they drive a little bit softer than a Chevy truck, but compared to a Ram, just not even close. That's why I went with the Ram that and the ridiculous discounts we were seeing about six, seven months ago. I picked this thing up about $12,000 knocked off of the sticker price and they also gave me almost three thousand dollars above my trade and this thing is absolutely fantastic i've had a great time ever since i made the purchase i made a few videos on it i know a lot of you guys have mixed opinions on this truck you think i should have kept the 2021 camaro a little bit longer which i understand but trust me that camaro was starting to see a little bit of issues every time i would do a highway pull the ac would go out for about 15 seconds some days the trunk decided to open some days the trunk decided not to open either way at around 40,000 miles i thought that it was time to get rid of that car especially considering that i got thirty-one thousand dollars on the trade three thousand above what I owed after the buyout. So I put that 3,000 towards my down payment on this truck and I'm paying under $600 a month for six years on this 2023 Bighorn. Either way guys, if you're looking for a luxury pickup truck, but you're concerned about Ram because of reliability, Hemi tick, or their cylinder deactivation, God knows what. I understand there's definitely their concerns, but when considering discounts and considering the level of refinement above the competition and considering you still get to keep that beefy V8, in my opinion, at least, it is a no-brainer, and I would definitely recommend checking one out. And a huge thanks to each and every one of you for helping make all these videos possible. I started this channel, it's been almost three years now. I think two years and 10 months, I started this channel, I think April or May. Regardless, since I started, I have had a blast making all these videos, driving all these different cars, and sharing the experience with all you guys. And I'm so unbelievably grateful that you guys enjoy my videos half as much as I enjoy making them. And for that, I gotta give you guys one more huge thank you. But as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment, let me know if it's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you wanna see reviewed on this channel, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.